Good evening to you. The 6th of May, we gather for evening prayer from the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. We are part of that community. And tonight you may notice that our backgrounds are varied. We're trying something new and we'll look forward to your feedback if indeed it is a comfort to you to see sights of Good Shepherd. Our liturgical team this evening are Kathleen, Jordan, Hardy Mahoney, and the Reverend Elise Gustafson, and we're glad you're here. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 131. For those following along in your prayer book, it is found on page 785. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me, but I still my soul and make it quiet. Like a child upon its mother's breast, my soul is quieted within me. O oh, Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Esdras. Mother, embrace your children. Bring them up with gladness, as does a dove. Strengthen their feet, because I have chosen you, says the Lord. And I will raise up the dead from their places and bring them out from their tombs, because I recognize my name in them. Do not fear, mother of children, for I have chosen you, says the Lord. I will send you help my servants Isaiah and Jeremiah. According to their counsel, I have consecrated and prepared for you 12 trees loaded with various fruits and the same number of springs flowing with milk and honey and seven mighty mountains on which roses and lilies grow. By these, I will fill your children with joy. Guard the rights of the widow, secure justice for the ward, give, give to the needy, Defend the orphan, clothe the naked, care for the injured and the weak. Do not ridicule the lame, protect the maimed, and let the blind have a vision of my splendor. Protect the old and the young within your walls. When you find any who are dead, commit them to the grave and mark it, and I will give you the first place in my resurrection. Pause and be quiet, my people because your rest will come. Here ends the reading. My soul, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of, of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and when Jesus was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Here ends the reading. From our holy women, holy men, in the life of the church today, we honor and lift up the faith in Christ of Harriet Starr Cannon, religious, 1896. And let me read to you about her. Harriet Starr Cannon founded the community of St. Mary. She was born in Charleston in 1823 and was orphaned in 1824 when her parents died of yellow fever. She grew up with her only surviving sibling in Bridgeport, Connecticut, in the home of relatives. In 1851, Cannon entered the Sisters of the Holy Communion, an order founded by William Augustus Muhlenberg, rector of the Christ of the Holy Communion in New York City. The sisters were heavily involved in the operation of clinics and care that would become St. Luke's Hospital in the city of New York. During her years with the Sisters of the Holy Communion, Cannon served as a nurse. Over time, she yearned for a more traditional monastic form of religious life. When agreement could not be reached with the Sisters of the Holy Communion, a small group of her sisters moved to form a new order. And on the Feast of the Presentation in 1865, the Bishop of New York received Canon and her sisters, and they took the traditional vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience at St. Michael's Church in Manhattan. The sisters began life together as the community of St. Mary and Harriet Cannon became the order's first superior. This group began with nursing in the care of women who had endured difficult circumstances. After a time, however, Mother Cannon and her sisters became increasingly committed to providing free schools for the education of young women in addition to their medical work. The community continued to grow and developed girls' schools, hospitals, and orphanages in New York, Tennessee, and Wisconsin. The community of St. Mary played a critical role in response to the yellow fever epidemic in Memphis in the 1870s. Sister Constance and her companions are remembered on September the 9th. It was a delight for me to refresh my memory about this saint. And in fact, I have some closeness with her order because whenever I'm in Suwannee, Tennessee and have the opportunity on a Sunday to worship there, I go to St. Mary's Convent, a lovely group of sisters committed to prayer and contemplative life. And let me tell you, they do make a wonderful breakfast after communion on Sundays. Um, they're in the kitchen on the bluff overlooking the land below. They know about hospitality, prayer, and contemplation. I was surprised to remember that this is the first female order in the Episcopal Church. And historically, it, I found it curious that there was so much resistance. There was a, a group of society people in New York who 
were critical. They call um, her, they call Cannon and her sisters um, covert papist. They conjured up stories about colorful lives that they were leading and even insisted that the bishop do an investigation of their home and rooms for illegal activities. Her biography makes light of this persecution, calling it the persecution. And it makes me surprised. I wondered why she met such resistance. I think that women were fine with being nurses and philanthropists, but women of prayer? And it seems to me that a part of this, given the, the values of the day, was that this indicated that women were full human beings, worthy of prayer. They were friends of God, children of God, in their own rights, and this was threatening. In this, there is recognized, I think, the power of prayer. They were putting something powerful into the hands of Harriet Cannon and her sisters. And in these days of resigning at home and not going out, flattening the curve, I know that for myself, I have found my prayer life so sustaining for me. There is indeed sustenance. There is power in prayer. And I pray that each of you watching tonight, each of our part of our liturgical team, are finding in some way your prayer life renewed as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, you called Mother Harriet and her companions to revive the religious life in the Episcopal Church by founding the religious community of St. Mary and to dedicate their lives to you. Grant that, after their example, we may ever surrender ourselves to the revelation of your holy will through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead. We thank you for your blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours 
through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. We now enter a time of intercessions and petition. We will offer, um, we will pause for a moment after each prayer. Those at home are invited to offer the prayers of your own heart with each petition. We pray for the Universal Church, its members, and its mission. For our companion diocese of Cuba and Peru, for our diocese and its parishes, for our bishops, our own congregation, that we will be united in love, faithful in our prayers, and lavish in our generosity. We pray for the nation and all in authority, for our president, Congress, and courts, our governor and state legislature, for our mayor and other local leaders, that they will make wise decisions and take right actions. We pray for the concerns of the local community, for the homeless and the destitute in our city, for the first responders, medical professionals, and all who care for others in this time of the coronavirus. We pray for those who suffer and those who are in any trouble. We give you thanks for the abundance of your care and love for us, for those who have recovered from COVID-19, and for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray for the departed, for those around the world who have died of COVID-19, and all those who have left this world either with others surrounding them or alone. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from your fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight 
to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, Jesus Christ stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you for joining us. May you continue to look for and live into that peace of Christ.